to the brief topic number eight is a brief discussion on the anti-social disorders and mental illnesses our community doesn't like to talk about. So we're continuing this kind of mind discussion. Afro Native World says, name of the book is Ma'at, Guiding Principles of Moral Living. So if you guys are interested, you can check out that book and thank uh, Afro Native World for the suggestion. So this uh, prompt, should be stopped number eight, comes with a, a link. We're going to play some of it, and then we'll discuss it. What is it like to be you? Um, I would say it's pretty average, to be honest. Um, if you were on the outside looking in, you would say that it was pretty boring. Um, because for the most part, I don't. Now, now, to, I, what I tend to do now is I tend to just really stick to myself, um, because I have to be very careful about how I'm interacting with people and under what context I'm interacting with people. Um, so I tend to limit anything that would be negative for me. Why do you have to limit yourself? Um, because if I encounter a certain kind of person um, and if I'm talking to you and I sense a level of weakness, um, I get kind of the urge to prey upon that in a way. So in order for me to kind of mitigate that, I definitely limit my, my social interactions um, and I have to make sure it happens underneath the right context. Otherwise, I just, you know, I, I, I try to stay away from it. I have to be fully transparent. Mm -hmm. When you reached out to me and I read your diagnoses, mm -hmm. I thought to myself, can I trust him? Mm -hmm. Can I give him the platform of our audience who I care deeply about? Mm -hmm. Are you going to try to manipulate me? Are you going to try to manipulate our audience? Are those valid concerns? Those would be valid concerns for sure. Um, but as I said earlier, you know, I don't, I don't, I, 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 like, I would say I like what you do um, because definitely people have voices that need to be heard. Um, and I would hate to, you know, disturb that process in any way. When you say prey on somebody, what mm -hmm. do you mean? Um, so the way it would work for me is um, I'll speak to someone. I won't really tell them much about me. They'll tell me about them. And then once they tell me about them, I'll kind of form a, a personality. I'll exaggerate certain features about my own personality to match what it is that they're looking to see. Um, and then once I once I get my goal, whatever that goal is, then I'm kind of I'm done with the situation and then I move on. And I've had feelings that I was strange at, as long as I could remember. What was it like to feel strange at a young age? Um, it was a bit interesting, I would say, because you're kind of able to exist on the fringe um, and kind of it's kind of like you're, you're you're on the outside looking in. Mm hmm. You know, everybody's, you know, everybody's on the other side of that window pane. So it kind of gives you the freedom to watch and to look and to observe, especially if you're a quiet person. Naturally, people can kind of forget that you're there. Did you feel like a different animal, a different species? Um, no, I thought everyone else was different as a kid. Um, as a kid, I thought they were the weird ones. And, you know, what was weird about them to you? Um, like, why are y'all? I guess why do you get so sad at certain things? Why do you get um, so excited over certain things? Like it's not, I just felt, I just looked at it like it's not, it's not natural. I wasn't really able to relate to other people. Um, and when people would get extremely angry or extremely sad, um, I would say as a kid more so, I would actually get annoyed. You know, or if people would get overjoyed and, you know, sometimes people get super excited. They jump up and down, they clap. As a kid, I would get annoyed by that because it's like, I don't understand why you, what's the purpose of this overt display? It doesn't, it doesn't do anything for anyone. You know, just the fact that you got good news, it doesn't make the good news better if you jump up and down about it. Um, you know, so I, 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 I sat back and I watched people. Um, and I watched how they were able to do things. Um, and I used this information to outsmart people. Um, you know, I was able to outsmart a lot of my teachers. Um, that's kind of how it started, the manipulation and the lying. Um, I would outsmart a lot of my teachers. I would come up with lies on the spot. Like I would come into class and my teacher would ask, where's the homework? 
I would tell her, oh, you know, my dog, he got rushed to the hospital last night. We were there late until about 3 a.m. And there was this problem and that problem and that problem. And I don't even have a dog, never had a dog. So would it be correct to say that when you meet somebody, you kind of size them up mm -hmm. and you say, okay, this person shouldn't or should be manipulated? Um, it's not should or shouldn't be. Um, if I have something that I want to get, then I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to get it. Since I walked in here and we started talking, mm -hmm. have you sized me up at all and analyzed any of my weaknesses and how they could be manipulated? <laughs> I mean, uh, when I was watching your videos, I mean, I thought about it. Um, but I wanted this to be kind of like more of an honest format. But no, I didn't, I don't, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. And it's also, I don't really gain anything from doing that in this situation anyway. Can a person ever fully trust a sociopath though? Um, I would say that you have to, you have to, if this is someone that you actually care about, um, you have to spend time with them and see actually where the where their head is at, I would say. Um, and I would say if this is in most cases, you wouldn't even know. To be honest, you wouldn't know until they did something to you, if I'm being honest. So, but if you're meeting someone like me who is gonna, you know, who who will tell you that this is what I'm going through, I would say, um, I would say watch them. You know, watch and see how it is they react to certain things. Um, see if they, you know, are prone to outbursts. Um, see if they're willing to lie to you, see if they're willing to manipulate you. So I find it interesting mm -hmm. that you said in order to trust mm -hmm. a sociopath, mm -hmm. you have to watch them, observe them, yeah. and understand their behavior. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you want people to act like you, or you only understand the world from your perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say it's that I necessarily want people to act like me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I look at it like it's more so about your own uh, safety. In a way, um, if you're dealing with someone that uh, does have those kind of issues, you know, they do have strong urges. Um, so you, that's where, you know, the observation point comes in, because you can't always perceive certain things like that based off of emotions. I'm really good at faking emotions. So you wouldn't if you're going off of emotional basis, you wouldn't you wouldn't know. When would you say is the last time you've manipulated somebody? Hmm. It's been about a year. A year? Yeah, it's been about a year. How have you gone a year without that? Um, I just, I kind of limit my social interactions. Um, I make sure I'm not dealing with certain kinds of people. Did you always understand the negative effect manipulation can have on others? No, I didn't, I didn't always understand why people had an adverse reaction to it. Um, because in a way I kind of looked at it like a game, um, and, and you lost. Do you feel ashamed about people you hurt in the past? Shame, not necessarily, but I do look at it as being inadequate. You being inadequate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean by that? It's low frequency. You know, low frequency actions, low frequency emotions. That's really, well, you know, that's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really help anyone. I guess it serves me. You know, I get to fulfill a sensation, but then I have to fulfill the sensation again. So you could say, even for me, it's not. It's not working. So when you kind of think about it logically like that and you gain insight, which is the issue, people that have, you know, that diagnosis, it, it's hard for them to have insight in terms of what other people mm -hmm. are experiencing. Um, so, you know, you have to you have to just gain a level of insight, I would say. What are all of your diagnoses? Um, so when it comes to antisocial personality disorders uh, specifically, you can see a lot of overlap with different conditions. Um, so for me, uh, I have a bipolar disorder. Um, there's the antisocial personality di uh, disorder. And then also um, I have some traits of borderline personality disorder. Typically, um, a person with the antisocial personality disorder, if they're getting diagnosed, it's because uh, Either someone asked them to go that was close to them that's hurt by their actions or they did something illegal mm -hmm. and now they have to see someone. Why did you seek out therapy in the first place? Um, because I was going through for quite some time. I was going through uh, basically bipolar episodes. Um, so and it was unusual for me because there would be times where I'm like. 
feeling a level of happiness, like this kind of overt happiness. And then there would be just this deep depression where I don't want to leave bed or I'll be intensely angry or I'll be so numb that basically, you know, I wish I was dead in certain, certain, certain circumstances. Um, and that was unusual for me because throughout my life, I was used to not really feeling too much. And I do feel like, you know, the bipolar disorder kind of resulted um, from the antisocial personality disorder. Um, I feel like it came from me just, um, I guess, trying too hard to feel like I was a regular person. Um, and then it it never works for too long because in order for you to have people close to you for a prolonged amount of time, um, they're going to find out that something's wrong. Did you have any fear with telling the world your diagnoses? No, because I'm... All right. I think we get a good gist of what he was saying. I, I particularly wanted to get the piece where he talks about the low frequency type stuff. Um, Kevin Carey, you just saw that video. You see the prompt, a brief discussion on the anti-social disorders and mental illnesses in our community that we don't talk about. What did you feel when you watched that video just now? Well, a side note real quick. The real socio-psychopath was that white dude. Yeah, yeah, man. Look at look at the look at the body. I don't know if you picked it up. Mm -hmm. Look at the body language. The dude looked like a freaking predator. He's like, he's like, let me get all. Let me. He's all me. up on him. Yeah, I was yeah. like, what, what's that about? Then, the black dude was one that's, that's talking too much. This guy is just he's picking your brain. He's he's getting your weakness. He's right. showing you're showing him how how, how your castle is built. You know. But we should not be talking to white people about our, our, our mental problem. We should be talking with each other. This, this <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's just my observation. I, I don't have much to say, but yeah, that's, I'm looking at the white dude. That's a, psycho, that's a psychopath right there. Just look at this dude, man. Thank you for that. <laughs> Brother Bakari, what say you? He says, what we don't talk about in our neighborhood more is something that we do need to talk about more. And he, this guy. Brother Bakari, you, your volume is kind of low. Can you bring it up? Uh, how about now? It's a little bit better. Go ahead. I, I don't know. I didn't change anything. But uh, what's going on in our community, uh, mental health and all that, that is stuff. That is something that we do need to discuss. I don't think, like the brother just spoke before me, you're doing do you're doing too much talking to that uh to that white guy, but that is something to, that is something we do need to discuss is what's going on because you can see the way that we carry on and some of the things that we do. You can just look and see uh how mm -hmm. how it's affecting how it's affecting us as a people and it's something more that we do need to touch on that's going on in our community. And I get my I appreciate that. In the chat, um, Tanzan was saying, I remember that little sociopath. Um, Tanzan, you're here with us. What say you to what you just saw? Yeah, I saw the guy from a previous interview he did. Uh, there was a series on psycho or sociopathic children. There was this little white girl who was just, you think he's called this guy? Yeah, no, the, the little white girl that I saw, she was just, you know, like those um, corn children. Those children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> children of the corn, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she actually, like, yeah, you'd be scared of, of her. So he was one of those, um, he was in that uh, um, list of, of children, you know, he was young at the time. But yeah, they, they, and, and I know this this guy too, the guy who does the interview, he goes around, he's like, a, you know, like a chubby chaser, so he's like a disabled chaser, sort of. He goes around interviewing people with different, um, well, I don't know whether it's being, you know, being, you know, a freak chaser or he just, you know, I don't know, but he, he tends to to interview differently abled people, both mentally and physically. So, okay, 
Yeah, so the, with the, the mental illness, I think we definitely should speak about it and agree with Brother Bakari that that's definitely something we should talk about, but not in front of other people. It's not something that, you know, you need to be do, washing your laundry when you have guests over. You know, that's the time to, to keep it within. But there's certainly a mental crisis uh, situation in, in, you know, the Black and African family worldwide. And unfortunately, if we don't listen to each other, that's what happens. You know, you find some of these very um, manipulative people who come and who just enjoy listening to seeing the poverty of Africa or the mental illness of, um, you know, Black Americans or the mental illness of Africans, they, they do get off on this kind of uh, dysfunction in, in the Black community. So I think that if we were to manage our dysfunction, we should have people who can go and talk to people with the problems and listen to them and talk to them so they don't have to resort to, you know, the, the easiest ear to talk to, which is these people. You know, it's the same in Africa. They they come, they take pictures with the, with the poverty-stricken people or with disabled children or with the ones who have their, their limbs cut off, you know, or blown off. And, you know, they get off this this kind of um, thing. So we should, this is something that it's more of an internal, um, uh, you know, an internal matter rather than putting it out there for public consumption. Yeah. I agree with that, times and I appreciate what you said. Uh, in the chat, the learning curve says what I was thinking, the white guy is feeding off of the black guy in a way. It's, it's a very interesting thing. If Gassim up will say, he'll probably talk about the occult, uh, the occult way of, uh, of, of how this looks. Um, speaking of Gassim up, let me go to his co-host, uh, one of them. Jay, what say you to this? It's, uh, it, 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 it goes deep, you know. Uh, I uh, for, for, Forcibly, uh, I, I had to dive into COVID narcissism. And... Uh, and and uh, the, the 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 how how covert narcissism how covert narcissists uh, develop is actually how every black person uh, grows up in in the diaspora. I believe you know you you never get recognized for beauty. You never get recognized for for intelligence. You never get uh, you recognized for 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 pos positive uh, positive things that 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 you for sure know that you that you have it. So 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 uh, it's it's a uh, it's a wonder you know where where our communities are saturated or, or it's rampant in our communities, but it's uh, it's. Uh, it's uh, it's it's still uh, you know st still you can see how, how how powerful we we actually are because I, I believe any other any other race creed or 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 or, or, or tribe would would have uh, uh, you know would, would have been uh, would have stopped existing you know. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, this. this uh, what what hurts me is that we we always find uh, um, uh, swear swear names or uh, neg negative naming negative naming. For example, the 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 the, the sister earlier, uh, uh, the the sister that that uh, that you know the, the the brother and the sister and the and the hamburger, and, and yeah. the, you know, uh, it's it's uh, we, we we found a word for 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 her, and it's 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 ratchet. No, no, she needs she needs help. She needs an heir. She needs uh, a family. Uh, she needs a village to 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 help her grow her children, right? And uh, 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 it, it it hurts also that that we that, that we flee from from the subject. Right? Uh, uh, you, you, your, your, um, uh, for example, me as a victim, right? I, I've, I've been ringing the alarm, but, 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 but uh, people tend to laugh, uh, uh, like, 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 uh, want, wanting, to, wanting to push me in, in the, in the corner of the, of the mama's boy. No, no, no. That's, that's not what I am, because, because half, half of your uh, idols uh, uh, worship, worship me as a god for, for, for what I did for them. So 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 uh, uh, and 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 actually uh, anything like I said before and anything I did 
and, and, and achieved in my life was to was to was to impress was uh, my mother was to make her see like hey you 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 have you have two sons two intelligent and, and very capable sons and 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 I just failed right I failed big and 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 and, uh, and 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 so I started ringing the alarm uh, and 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 I found out that 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 people People were seeing what was happening, but 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 they thought it was funny, right? So 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 uh, behind our backs uh, of of our little family of four, uh, uh, two sons and 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 two parents uh, uh, behind our backs, you know, uh, uh, my my father also is a very, very was a very strong man, uh, uh, and uh, very much respected in the community, but but they don't know how much respect he, he actually deserves for 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 uh, biting through this uh, very strong uh, uh, covid narcissist uh, that we had to, we us three had to deal with have to deal with now now it's us two that have to deal with it but um, I, I believe none of them uh, neither me nor my brother are, are dealing uh, with it but but uh, uh, you know how my how my father did it. Nobody actually, you know, he as I said, he's very much respected in this uh, community here in uh, Rotterdam. But no one really knows how strong he actually uh, is was. Uh, 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 but but because because the, this this you know this as a community we 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 are mentally mentally ill, I believe. I believe, uh, as a, as a community, as a whole, we are mentally ill, and 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 so and so, uh, and no nobody noticed. If you, if you if you are if you really are a village, some someone would have said at a certain point instead of instead instead of ha ha ha, ain't it funny how your mother does your father ha ha ha. ha. Instead instead of that, a, a village a village uh, would have thought about the children. So how about those two sons? How are they, how are they dealing dealing with 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 this 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 morbid this morbid uh, this this cold this you know how how are they dealing with it? Nobody nobody you know everybody everybody swallowed the the the. The, the bringing down you know uh, yo yo two two black two black sons you know of course of course the one one is a criminal and the other is is crazy and 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 drugged but but none none of it was 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 through we uh, me my brother was actually a copy of my father in his way in the streets and i i'm a copy of my father in 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 uh in um uh, uh uh, what, what's the word in in working you know in working in serving the community and in in serving uh the employer in serving the the the, the team in, in serving the, the 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 music band so 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 but no nobody noticed so 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 now now we we are going into history as 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 two bums and uh, uh, uh but but how how is it possible how can how can a father like my like mine produce two bombs it's, it's it's nonsense right so 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 as a community i think as a community uh, in the diaspora right as an immigrant community we 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 uh, us blacks the 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 black the african uh, 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 jay jay we gotta wrap this now like uh let's finish off that thought as far as the prompt is concerned so i want to uh, I want to end the show we, at one. We, right? we are, we are, as a community, I believe we are antisocial. The, 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 uh, to to wrap it up, as a community, as a uh, as an African diaspora, we are anti antisocial. We laugh about each other. We find we find negative words instead of uh, taking care of. That's it. It's true. That, that, that there's some truth to what you said there at the end. Um, Oni, what are your thoughts on this? Well, first I want to say, Brother Bakari, I think that Jose is older than you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh. what I to say? Uh, uh, well, oh yeah, I wanted to say about what, when, when Jose said that we call the lady ratchet. I think only he called her ratchet. I, I called her a psychopath. I called her a psychopath. I also think that when we talk about public chat, oh no, one thing I noticed when you in the interview, the guy says, 
did you feel like another species? Yeah. Really awkward question to ask a black person, right? <laughs> but uh, as far as the public chat conversation, I'm going to say this. So I don't usually have uh, white coworkers. I, I finally got some of them. I, I, I do this remote thing. And I'll tell you, man, we should have been warning. Because like, like, like when we talk about public chat, like I realize white folks do not talk about their mental illnesses. But yeah. they got mental illnesses out the wazoo. Yeah. I remember back in the day when I first heard, like I first talked to a crazy person who was like a white person. And this person was batshit crazy. And I thought, and I was like, like, because black folks say they ain't crazy. And, you know, it's just nothing. Like, you know, like this guy talking about he's a sociopath and he's just not emotional. Like, that's that doesn't sound too, uh, like, abnormal, you know? Like, you don't get happy when other people are happy. Like, that's not, you know, like, 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 I, I said, like, I'm not going sit here and be convinced that I'm a sociopath for sitting down during graduation ceremony saying it's kind of boring. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like it was boring. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but like, I got this white coat coworker. Oh, geez. Like, cause I'm saying to myself, how do white people do this? You know, I actually wrote this tweet today, but it's like, how do white people piss you off even when you work in remote? You know what I mean? Like, how do they do that? And it's like constant. Cause I thought my last white coworker was like shit. You know, I was like, oh, that's what we're You know, whatever, right? This woman, she keeps saying she has Asperger's or something. I don't know what it is. I, but you know, all the other white people there just kind of like let her slide with just doing the most bad shit, crazy things, constantly. Like she got like OCD, like nobody else. We talking about we all log off at, you know, 5.30 my time. She's still typing people at 7.30, you know? And that, no, she's typing, she typed me at 7.30. She probably typing and working till like eight, nine o'clock. For what reason, nobody knows, you know? Completely off protocol, but like she would keep telling you, hey, I got Asperger's, I, I can't understand social problems, all that kind of stuff. I, my, my takeaway from this video is this. First off, white folks don't tell you none of this stuff. Nope. Second of all, if y'all have been working with these white folk all this time, y'all should have been telling us how bad shit crazy they are. Because not all of us know, you know? Uh, Learning Curve wrote down Asperger's is autism. Not, all, I mean, I don't know. She seems like pretty highly functional. Right, now now she's going to make me see like I'm talking about an autism person. I don't know. Autism person. I don't know. But, like, realistically, you know, she seems highly functioning, but just odd. You know, like, 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 I'm just minding my business, and she's like, "You should go review the math and so on and so forth." I'm like, "Look, you know, I don't know if this person's, like, like, you gonna tell me to review my, like, whoa, like, I, like, these white folk are something else." And so, you know, this whole public chat thing, I think that realistically, we gotta start, like, what we should be doing, like, we, like, I think we, we spoke about it that last time or when we did today. We talking about we uh, need to go about intelligence. We need to go about over what these white folk are doing because that that brother that you know the dude that we were just interviewing that was just interview he just reminded me of my my, my kid brother you know uh, my kid brother uh, my my kid brother might like kind of low key something bad I think, well I guess I don't know but you could like you know you could still vibe with this dude like this dude he's like oh I'm manipulating people but he probably good people these white folk when they I tell you like I tell you I'll tell you the truth when this white woman told me a long time ago this white woman told me she was crazy. She said she would go outside and scream at the top of her lungs. And she don't even know why she's doing it. She just go, she just get up and scream. And I never heard anything that crazy. Why the hell? You know, and she, these, are, these are these are this is what they are. This is what they do. This is how they this is what they this is what they know. And then you know, this guy's like, oh, I just made people for personal gain. Like, who don't? You know, like a woman says, Hey, I don't want to marry you. You know, I want to get married. You're like, Yeah, I want to get married too. I don't want to marry this woman. You know, like what you like? No, like this dude is normal, and he's talking to like like I pointed out, he's talking to the real sociopath, and these white folk got real sociopath. I'm just saying. That. Let's hear from observing immigrants. What what say you to all of this? Hi again. Um, <clears throat> I think that um, in terms of mental illness, I think in the black community we do know people with mental illnesses. I think the only issue is that it should be. Um, they're not getting professional help. Um, so we do have people just walking around the neighborhood with mental illnesses and they sp spend the entire parts of their life just going through the processes unless they do something really extreme. You know, most black people with basic mental illness 
will just exist that way. I'm happy that a lot of people brought up the issue of white people in terms of our connection to mental illnesses, because truth be told, I think that, um, you know, we've spent 400 years with homie, home, <laughs> homicidal, sociopathic, um, psychologically um, impaired psychos. So there's no way that, you know, none of that has rubbed off on us. Yeah. So the mental illnesses that I think we see is a side effect of being around Europeans with mental illnesses. You understand that they have lived very comfortable lives and they are some of the most fragile people that they need. Um, was it those, um, you know, the little animals they need to comfort them? I'm oh, like, yeah. I'm like, how fragile a mind do you have that you need to have a little animal walking behind you to balance you off psychologically? Like, you know, you tell me all the crazy stuff you do, that little animal is really going to help you. I mean, you know, it, it makes no sense. And then when you look at history, you know, I always bring up the, the issue with Ted Bundy. You have Ted Bundy killing a bunch of white women. And what does he get in return? He gets fan mail, love letters like Jeffrey Dahmer. And no people have asked, like, what the hell? You've got a, a psychopath who's getting fan mail, yeah? So you have a whole society of crazy white young girls, yeah? I get it. Who see a it. murderer of young white women as something to, to, to be sexual because if you're sending him love letters you have to be sexually aroused by the fact that he killed other women yeah so that part doesn't make sense and even people like um jeffrey dahmer and um you know when they when they have killers you have a society of europeans who do not publicly condemn their mental disorders yeah so like this white guy here interviewing this black guy as you know the, the guy before said you know his his behavior is a little antisocial but it's not mental illness to the point of you know let, let me interview you because you're a psycho yeah but their psycho behavior they're creating mass shooters in the suburbs like what's going on in the suburbs that you can't address the fact that you're creating mass shooters to go shoot up supermarkets and schools yeah but the suburbs are supposed to be better than the hood yeah, but no people will talk about the shootings in the hood. But your suburbs are comfortable. You've got mommy and daddy in the house, and you've got money, and all your basic needs are being met. But you're creating a little sociopath and a little psychopath, a little homicidal maniac who feels that his feelings are hurt, that he got to go shoot up some shit. You know, so it makes no sense. I appreciate that, observing immigrants. Um I don't think I heard from the forecast yet on this. The forecast, what what say you? Ah, uh, yeah, I'll be quick because yeah, I hope I don't miss nothing. Um, yo, because I I think that black people, we I think we all got mental illness. To be honest with you, like we all suffer from some. I call it black syndrome, but people call it Stockholm syndrome. But we ain't from no Sweden. But um, <laughs> yo, I ain't gonna lie, I I'm antisocial myself. But like when it comes to the thing, like you can see the difference between like so, sociopaths are created, psychopaths are born. Like you can see the difference from this brother and this white boy. You know what I'm saying? And how that operates, you know what I'm saying? A, a sociopath may uh, lose feeling because he killed so many people because he's done it for, I got to make money for my kid and my, mom, you know, I got to do this and do that. A psychopath, like, yo, I'm going to just light this cat on fire just because, you know, it's, it's fun. This is what I do. You know what I'm saying? And that's a clear difference that we got to understand in our community. And I think that we all need help. Definitely, we need help. You know what I'm saying? And I want to say to like JB when it comes to like narcissists, narcissists, and then like us when it comes to like psychopaths, you know what I'm saying? Like the difference is like, like I said, like every psychopath or every narcissist comes with a, a codependent. The thing you got to realize the narcissist is probably not going to change. The psychopath probably not going to change. The only thing that can ever change is the uh, person who realizes that there's a problem and you can only change your situation for what it is. You know what I'm saying? And the thing about a psychopath, it is not about right and wrong. It's about winning, domination, control, and all of that stuff. But, yo, your freedom, your control of your own life have to mean more to you than anything else. You know what I'm saying? But I would say for black people as a whole, we all probably need to get help in some kind of form or whatever it is. It may not be therapy because it may not work for everybody. But yo, I think we all sick, to be honest with you. So I'll pass the mic. 
I appreciate that. In the chat, Afro Native World says, I would advise that professional help be African centered. I've heard stories of Urugu psychologists, psychiatrists, making it worse for our people when they see them. Uh, let's get a Zuli, and then after that, Mr. Untouchable. Um, well, I I see I I'm, I see it differently. Um, if I think I don't know if this is scripted, all this shit could be bullshit. I think the the the, the guy interviewing is projecting his own thing on this young man because this young man, they say the first thing to solving an issue is to acknowledging. He, he's already acknowledged that he's a sociopath or whatever. So, but what I want to say. If he didn't have any trauma growing up, because people are not just sociopaths, don't tell them like that. This person could be in a state. That's a that's a that's a, that's a warrior. That's a soldier. If you could devoid yourself of feelings of not being too feely, feely, feeling empathetic, sympathetic, that's a warrior. This man belongs on the war front. That's how I see it. If he's born like that, or or maybe he's some trauma which could be um therapeutic and then for him to control it like that because i think this young man does feel in order for you to admit that you don't feel you do feel so i think it might be a difference mechanism for him because maybe when he was younger people took advantage and all of this and he just realized the world ain't shit so he's like you know what yeah i'm not gonna use me like that i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it to y'all but if this young man if he's born like that this is a warrior this is a lieutenant this is a soldier that's how i look at it so I don't really look at it as a negative because he said he controls it. He says, he says, when I see I could take advantage of certain people, I just stay away from them. That's very revealing. That's very self-aware. That young man is, is, is far ahead of the game because there's a bunch of people in our community suffering with his traumas, use people and act like they're great people. Oh, I never did nothing to nobody. So kudos to this young man. Mr. Untouchable. <laughs> Shout out to my brother Zuli. I, I man, I love that dude, man. He's he's so great. Um, what what I would say is that I, I have run across within. Let me narrow the scope a little bit and just stri strictly limit it to my, within my community. You know, I I have run across many narcissists, narcissists to a level you wouldn't even believe. You know, I, I've run across some sociopaths. You know, they could do things to you and then go eat McDonald's afterwards. You know, they have no care and concern. For, for for human life outside of themselves. I met these kinds of people before, so I know they exist. It's unfortunate though that within our community that we look at <laughs> we look at mental illness and, and antisocial uh, disorders as a spiritual thing. You know, you, you splash some white Jesus on it to make it all better. You know, and that's that's an unfortunate thing. But I think that within the greater community, one of the greatest Ill mental illnesses that, that we suffer from is Afrophobia. That is a mental illness that I feel like it is extended without throughout the, the African diaspora. We suffer from the sickness and illness of Afrophobia. There's this this white um, um, slave master that's living within our within all our brains that we need to um, what do you call it? We need to um, get an exorcism. We need to <laughs> all have an exorcism from this white supremacist in our in our brains. That's stopping us from looking at looking at one another in a skeptical manner, not wanting to do business with one one another, or you know, when any dealing with e each other in a very vile manner. You know, what I mean, the minute you scratch a, a person or offend a person, the person either want to kill you, you know, or get into these harsh, horrible discussions with people who look just like you. I think that we need to disassociate ourselves with this. This white supremacist within all of us, this Afrophobic phobic white supremacist within within our brains. We need we need an exorcism. I I, I feel throughout our community. I th I think that that's one of the major illnesses, mental illnesses that we suffer from throughout the diaspora. Besides the fact that that we suffer from uh, a, a lot of narcissists and sociopaths, man. I I, I run across a, a few of them before in my lifetime, you know. But I. I like I say, I think that within our community, because we are unscientific and we don't really go into the sciences like that, we sprinkle a little bit of white Jesus on it, white Jesus on it to make it okay. And I, I think that that's not enough within our community. You know, I'll give anyone a chance who wants to um, to say anything to what Mr. Untouchable just said. If not, we can go to shoot the breeze topic number nine tonight. 
I think I got everyone just now. Shoot the breeze topic number nine is because we're trying to get out of here by one. 